Well, hello there, fellow maker. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill, and this is Prop 3D, and we're continuing our journey making a prop helmet using a low-budget 3D printer, the ANET A8. When we last left off, I had printed all the parts, but I had mentioned that there was one part that didn't come out great, and I wanted to print it over again. Well, I did that three more times. And for some reason, because it was the last piece, it decided that it needed to be a pain. Two of these prints failed in absolutely spectacular fashion. Now, I wasn't watching when it happened. Uh, I was in the other room, and when I came back, I noticed that the top part of the print had shifted by a couple of inches. Now, it did finish, which is pretty amazing, but the prints themselves were unusable. What's weird is that it failed in the same way in the same place twice in a row, and I think what happened is the fan nozzle at that height either hit or got stuck on part of the print, caused the y-axis uh, to skip a whole bunch of steps and offset everything by a couple of inches. So I went and removed the custom nozzle that I printed. I put the stock one back on and I also reoriented the piece in Cura and printed it again. Finally, on the fourth try, it came out awesome. At this point, I could finally get to work on cleanup. That's right, time for sanding. I figured it would be easier to start the sanding before I started assembling everything, so I worked on each part by itself. For some of the more hideous imperfections, I used a razor blade as a scraper, a la Jimmy Duresta, to knock back a whole bunch of that roughness. This actually worked pretty great as the initial step in my fairing process on these 3D printed parts. I will say, if you try it at home though, uh, do yourself a favor and round over the pointy edges so you don't poke yourself. Also, be sure to dispose of those blades in a safe manner. Some of the fine inlaid detail parts of the prints were cleaned up using a set of needle files. And of course, I tackled as much of the surface detail with some hand sanding and a heavy grit sandpaper. I went with 100 grit or 60 grit to really remove as many of those layer lined textures as possible. When I was printing these parts, I tried to avoid having any of the support material touch down on parts that would be showing, but there were a couple of areas where it was kind of necessary. These spots had some gaps and voids in them that needed to be filled a little bit. To start off, I used super glue. I just used a medium gap filling super glue to kind of uh, seep in between all of those little surface details. Then once that super glue was fully cured and rock solid, it could be sanded smooth using a needle file. The back of the visor part will never be seen, so I didn't worry too much about removing the texture. However, there was some squiggly looking 3D printed plastic artifacts there that needed to be cleaned up a little bit in the areas where it would attach to the helmet. Now, finally, I can start gluing all of the parts together. If you remember, I modeled in a bunch of holes for registration on all of the edges, and to glue them together, I made little pegs out of finishing nails and a mini bolt cutter. Those little pegs were then glued in place in the holes on the side of all my parts. Once the pegs were installed, I could glue that piece to the part next to it and be fairly certain those edges would line up as close to perfectly as possible. This was continued until an entire section of the helmet was glued together. I repeated the process for the top, bottom, and middle portions of my helmet. Those registration pegs made it super easy to put all of these parts together and make sure everything was as flush as possible. With each row of the helmet parts glued together, I took the bottom and middle rows and I glued them together. But instead of using super glue, I used a five minute epoxy. I figured I would need just a little bit of extra working time. After super gluing my registration pegs, I mixed up some of that five minute epoxy and brushed it on the exposed edges. Since these two parts had two good parallel surfaces, I could employ some clamps to squish those two parts together while that five minute epoxy cured. Once those two parts were nice and secure, I could put the top of the helmet on. I didn't think I would be able to clamp this part, so I just slapped it on the top using more super glue and I held it in place by hand while the glue cured. Overall, each piece ended up fairly flush with the one next to it, but it wasn't perfect. So of course I had to do a little bit more sanding. The razor blade scraper was super handy to get the fairing process started. Once the sides were flush, I had to contend with the slight gap between them. For these smaller gaps, an air drying spot putty did a fantastic job. The green goo was spread into the seam and allowed to dry. I like using sculpting chisels for this kind of work. In fact, some of the smaller tools are great for getting into the more detailed areas of the print. The goal was to fill in as much of the gap as possible within reason. 
This stuff is meant to fill in about 1 16th of an inch at a time, so sometimes multiple passes are required. Once that first pass is fully dried, I sanded it down nice and flush with the surrounding plastic. Any areas that weren't completely filled in got the treatment a second time. I ended up going over everything two or three times as needed. The last round of sanding was handled with a medium grit sanding sponge. Of course, this finish isn't perfect by any means, but all of this work made the rest of the finishing process a lot more bearable. To really smooth out the finish on this helmet, I went with Smooth-On's XTC 3D. This is an epoxy that's meant to coat 3D printed parts. After mixing it together in a two to one ratio, I made sure to pour it into a wide container. Leaving it in a small, deep container will cause the exothermic reaction to run away quickly, causing the epoxy to cure way too fast. I hot glued a piece of EVA foam to the back of the visor to make it easy to hold and clamp while I brushed on the epoxy resin. For the helmet, I started by hand holding it while I brushed epoxy onto the bottom of the helmet. When the bottom was covered, I flipped it over and plopped the helmet on a head casting to hold it while I covered the rest of the helmet. XTC 3D gives you a pretty good amount of working time, but when it starts to cure, you're done. If you haven't covered the whole piece, just mix up another batch and use that. I also made sure to try and sprout out any of the epoxy that was pooling in some of the deeper details. I used a popsicle stick to scrape out as much as I could. With the helmet covered, I let the whole thing cure overnight. Sure enough, the next day it was all cured and ready for the next round of sanding. Now the goal after this is to sand this thing as perfectly smooth as possible without any hints of lines or seams. But all of that work is gonna have to wait until the next video. For now, the surface texture has been all filled in, it's all put together, and I can even wear it on my head. Ta-da! Tell you what, so far this has been quite a lot of work, a lot of hand sanding, but I'm really happy with how everything's turning out. I'm gonna have one or two more good passes of sanding to go on this thing, but then I can paint it, and I'm really excited to get there. Thank you so much for hanging around during our low budget 3D printer build. I hope that you're getting as excited as I am to see this thing fully finished. Of course, if you have any questions about this build in particular, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, all of the tools and materials that I use during this build, those are linked down below. That's all I've got for you guys today. It's time for me to get back to sanding. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next build and happy printing. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.